Hello, and this is uh, David Snow, Pastor David, and I just want to welcome you all to the Community Church of Mount Pleasant here in the middle of your week. I hope your week has been good. This is December 13, so we are uh, less than two weeks away from Christmas Day. It's hard to believe that we're zipping right through December, and, and uh, man, thank you for visiting with me today. I can't wait to get into my devotional today and share some things with you today I'm excited about, but before that, let me catch up on, a, on some things. Our last two Sundays we talked about Christmas. We talked about the marvel of Christmas. We talked about the meaning of Christmas. And uh, specifically the virgin birth and the significance of that and, and uh, how important that really is in, in the, the, uh, the credibility of the scriptures, the word of God, how it validates, how true and, and uh, how, how real truth can change our lives. So. This coming Sunday, I really, really want to invite you. We're going to have a phenomenal time. Our worship team, our orchestra and band and, and worship team and choir and our children will all be participating in our Christmas program. It will be this Sunday and it's called Heirlooms. And uh, you will know many of the songs and, and there it will be a warm, fuzzy kind of a time. And so I, I can't wait for Sunday. I hope you'll be there. I hope you maybe bring a friend or a family member. And also, we have another treat for you Sunday. This Sunday, we're going to have fruit bags, our Christmas fruit bags. And we're going to give them to you on Sunday. And if there's someone that you know that might be blessed by one, perhaps you can take one to give out to a friend. Uh, so I'm excited about that. Now, this Saturday, we're going to meet here at the barn. And we're going to have breakfast together. You know we like to eat together. And we're going to assemble these fruit bags. We're going to make an assembly line and we'll have apples and oranges and, and various candy and, and things to put into the fruit bags. And we'll do that and have Chris, Christmas music and just have a great time together. So 10 o'clock this Sunday if you want to join us for breakfast and we'll put the fruit bags together. It's just going to be a fun time. Bring the kids, bring everybody. Uh, real informal. Uh, it's going to be a good time Saturday. And then Sunday, heirlooms. And now the next two Sundays, I can't wait. I'm very excited about Christmas Eve Sunday, the 24th. We will have church that morning, 1030. And uh, we're going to have Christmas communion. I have a, a little message that I'm going to give. And then we're going to do some special songs and, and celebrate. And then we're going to have a really sweet, precious time together around the Lord's Table Communion on, on Christmas Eve Sunday morning, 1030. January or December 31st, the last day of 2017, we're going to have church, 1030, and our theme for that Sunday will be 2017, A Look Back. Now, we're going to have some stories from some individuals about some things God has done for us in 2017. Think about a lot of the things God's done for us as a church, and there are going to be some individuals. And you know what? If you have a story, if you have a, a, a really neat thing that God has done for you in 2017, get it ready. And I want to give you the mic that day and let you have an opportunity to share a testimony, a story about something God's done for you this past year as we get ready to dive into 2018, a brand new year. All right, well, uh, I want to get into Luke chapter 2. This is the Christmas story. This is that famous passage that you have heard. It, it's become so familiar to you. We probably could all quote this chapter together. We've heard Linus quoted on the Charlie Brown Christmas, and it's just a popular thing. And, and so I want to read, uh, starting with verse 10. We can go through one, but I want to start with verse 10 today. And, and I want to talk to you about some things about Christmas. And so I, I want to entitle my little talk, Good News. I have, listen, do you need some good news today? Have, is there something bothering you? Are you frustrated? Do you have something in your mind that's distracting you? Can I give you some good news today? In fact, it's really great news. And it comes right out of the Bible, God's Word. Luke chapter 2, I'm going to start with verse 10, and I want to read through verse 20. And then I want to come back and, and uh, make a few observations, as I like to do as I teach through the Word of God. But uh, familiar story, the Christmas story. Let's read in Luke chapter 2. Verse 10, <clears throat> and the angel said unto them, and, and these next two words are two of my favorite words in all the Bible, fear not. Now, the shepherd didn't say it, the, the, uh, the people didn't say it, the government didn't say it, the angel 
said unto them, Fear not. And and I, I want to, can I say that to you today, not just as your friend or as your pastor, but, but from God Himself, because this was the message that the angels brought. Fear not. But pastor, you don't understand. You, you don't know my, my financial, you don't know my job situation. You don't know I got these things going on in my family. Fear not. Fear not. Take a deep breath. Don't stress, if I could give that translation a little bit. Fear not today, whatever it is. And, and I, know, I know that it's big. I know that whatever it is in your life, that enemy, that giant that you're facing, is it seemingly may be uh, overwhelming. But fear not. For I bring you good tidings of great joy. Stop. Stop fearing. Stop fretting. Stop stressing. Fear not, because God says, I'm in control. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. I bring you great news, which shall be to all people, not just Mary, not just Joseph, not just the shepherds, not just the wise men, to all people. This news is great news because Jesus is here, and He's come to deliver us all, all people, you, in your living room, in your office, in your car, you, I have great news for you. Here it is. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. That is the best news you're going to hear all year. That's the best news you're going to hear all your life. Stop. Quit worrying. Quit fretting. I want to tell you there is a Savior, and His name is Jesus. Emmanuel, God is with us. This day, in the city of David, a Savior is born, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, that ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace. Don't you love that? Peace. Good will toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. Jesus is here. Guys, let's go see this thing, this baby. Let's go see this Savior who's going to change the world. Let's go now. They came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Do you need to stop what you're doing and go find Jesus? Do you need to go find Jesus today? He's there. He's there. You can. Stop. Fear not. Don't fret. Be still. Go find Jesus. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they heard it were wondered at all those things which were told them by the shepherds, but Mary, verse 19, kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Mary, the mother. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen and it was told unto them. All right, I'm going to close. I want to give you a bunch of S's, okay? S's. I want you to see this story and I want to give you seven S's. First of all, I want you to see the Savior in verse 11. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. First of all, a Savior. Number two, in verse 12, a sign. A Savior and a sign. This shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. A Savior and a sign. Number three, I want you to see that there's a song. Did you know there's a song here? Verse 13 and 14. And... Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, good will toward men. There was a Savior, there was a sign, there was a song. Now I want you also to notice in verse 15 there were shepherds. 
And it came to pass as the angels had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let's go now even to Bethlehem and see that which has come to pass. So we see a Savior, a sign, a song, and shepherds. Look at verse 17. There's, there's a tidbit in verse 17. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them by con concerning this child. They were, there was a saying. So they went out and they spread the saying. There was a Savior, a sign, a song, shepherds, a saying. And then verse 19, there was a secret. Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. She was overwhelmed at, at the, the personalness of this event in the life of Mary. So there was a Savior, a sign, a song, a shepherd, a saying, a secret. And the last thing I want you to know in verse 20, there was service. Now watch. And the shepherds returned. The shepherds left their jobs. They left their sheep. They went to see this thing that was come, this baby Jesus, and they found Him in a manger, and it changed the world. It was awesome. And after that, verse 20 says, they returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. They returned to their life. And you know what? After Christmas, we're going to have some days off. We're going to have fun. We're going to eat. We're going to open bread. We're going to do all that. But after Christmas, guess what? we got to go back to work. we got to go back to life. And so we're going to return as the shepherds did. Those sheep needed them. There's people that need you. Your job. You have to take care of your family. Life goes on after Christmas. But they left praising God and glorifying Him for all the things that they heard and see. They were excited and they were ready to go out and do life again all over again. So we have a Savior and a sign and a song and shepherds and a saying and a secret. And then we have the service that God has called us all to do. Luke chapter 2. Merry Christmas. I can't wait till Sunday. If you want to come Saturday and have breakfast with us and help us with our fruit bags, 10 o'clock at the barn. Sunday morning, 10.30. It's called heirlooms. I look forward to seeing you then. God bless you. Remember, this is good news.